there's an old saying amongst us Radri, right? That it, you're not home unless you can smell the Murrumbidgee River. <laughs> For us here on the Murrumbidgee River, people have always been on the Murrumbidgee River. We have such an affinity with it. Murrum means big, Bidgee means boss or mate. And uh, when it's in flood, he's your boss. When it's in drought, he's your boss. And it's a male river, by the way. My people are Radri people. We have an overarching totem of the, of, of the Gawana, the Guga. But we're also known as Binan Villa people, many rivers people. So we used to control the, the Yindi Mullawa, which is the Murray, the Murrumbidgee, the Galeri, which is the Lachlan, and, and the Macquarie. So for us, we are water people. It's very important to us to uh, understand our river systems and our creeks and our streams and all the water life, uh, aquatic species that live in it and the, and the bird life that lives on top of it and, and how we interact with, with those things. Without water, you, you die straight away. It's a vast commodity that, that we protected up until you know, smallpox and other poxes got into our system and, and, and killed most of our people, but we still haven't given up on the river and we don't think the river's going to give up on us. So. Can't smell the Murrumbidgee River, mate, you're not home. They say my people have been here for 60,000, maybe 80,000. There's some thoughts now around some of uh, the shell middens that they've been finding that we've been here for 150,000 years. What I'd say to you is that those plants have been here for millions of years. And, and so they've adapted and stake their claim to where they live. We work in with, with them, their availability to that certain area. You know, we have a, a song line uh, that's particularly important to the uh, River and a Red Gun, the Eucalyptus camellia densis. Uh, it's a Yari Yari plant. It's been holding up the banks of the Murrumbidgee River for millions of years. They've evolved just like other plants. They, they know what they're there for. They uh, you know, grow, they give us everything that I've just mentioned. And then eventually, as the river moves, they fall into the river and they provide habitat for fish. And um, We use them when we're blocking off um, lagoons after, after floods, when the little fish have gone in there looking for um, calmer waters and we, we block uh, uh, the lagoons up and then those fingerlings, small fish grow in the fish so we have already made food source by the tree falling into the river and us using it in times of flood to ensure that we've got a food source down the track. say to you as a Radri person who's lived on Radri land all my life, except for the couple of years I spent in Sydney, is that I, my family, uh, have uh, white box as one of our trees, as, which is part of our responsibility to look after country. So we have an affinity with the white box, but that doesn't say that we, we, we don't love what the red, uh, red box does for us. And the yellow box, it's good for, for fires and all that sort of stuff. But they belong here on Radri country. But this is their land as well as ours. So I would say to you that as a Radri person living on Radri land, I would like to see provenance of Radri plants that live here. If you want Western Australian plants, move to Western Australia. <laughs>
Australian bush is losing its identity as well. It's not right. I mean, um, silver ash and golden ash and uh, all those other type of trees don't belong in, on the banks of the Murrumbidgee River or our lagoon system. They don't belong there. It's not, it's not their land, basically. They shouldn't be there. And then those plants then lean over the backyards or side of the yard and the seeds fall into the drainage system and then the drainage system washes them down to a point where they're all collective and then next thing you see this area that's totally polluted by all these backyard escapees. People just forget about those places. But in the case, say, of Flowerdale Lagoon, for instance, where all the stormwater drains out to, there are all these trees that don't belong on that on the riverbank there because they've escaped from, from somebody's backyard. They floated down in the stormwater system. They found a place when there's been plenty of water and then they've settled when the water's uh, resided and then they spread their uh, sheets and bang, you have an area where it's, it's basically backyard escapees wild bush. I would prefer that uh, people look at our beautiful natives that are in this country. Uh, some of them are very uh, bright coloured and do the same job as some of the ones that are uh, imported from overseas. I just think if you're in Australia, you need to be aware that these are our native plants and that they can do the same job as your imports. tell you now that if you really think about your backyard and you're planting species that are going to attract some of the native bird life and then you're sitting out the back and you've got all those you know, kingfishers coming down and having to feed the honey, uh, honey eaters and, and, and tree creepers and all the rest of them I just think the Australian bush and native birds they're great together and I couldn't think of anything better than sitting out the backyard looking at them Banksias and your, and your bottle brush, they're the plants I go for. I, I, I think they look really nice. I'm not a big fan of wattle colours, especially like um, Kudamundra wattle. Yeah, a bit of a pest these days, but other wattles are, are quite good. There are many eucalypts here. We've got our scented gums, which are really beautiful, out, uh, you know, sitting in the backyard, smelling them letting the breeze carry the scent. And they're so colourful, they're all different coloured, and um, they look good here. If you get get hold of books, or even go and see some of the native uh, nurseries, they'll put you right about what plants, you know, are from Wagga, um, what, what ones are from the river owner, which ones belong on the banks of the Murrumbidgee River and in your backyard. When they get a look at what you've got, they can recommend the right plants for you. This has to be a complete rethink about the type of plants that are sold in nurseries and they have to be directed by government. So there has to be a move federally and, and state and local to ban trees like privet trees. They're bad for your health, they cause asthma amongst children, but because you know, Lady Macquarie had one in her front yard and then every non-Indigenous people in New South Wales and then Victoria had to have one. Privet escaped. Birds eat the black fruit that's on, on the privet and take it and spread it. And then it's in the bush and everybody said, oh, geez, how wonderful the bush looks. But when a closer inspection, it's a total mess. 